Well, Governor Fallon, thank you for joining us today here at the Southern Republican Leadership Conference. You've been busy. We're, we're talking today on Friday. You've been busy Thursday and Friday. Give us a quick summary of how your two days have gone and your, some of your impressions. Oh, and this has been such a huge event for the city of Oklahoma City and for the state of Oklahoma. I'm so proud of how well our city has responded to host so many guests. You know, we have people here from around 14 different states, over 140 national and international media outlets, right. and close to around 1,500 people who have attended this event. And, of course, to have at least a dozen potential and announced presidential candidates is, is quite remarkable for the state of Oklahoma. It has really put Oklahoma on the map of an important debate in our nation, and that is who's going to be the next presidential Republican nominee uh, in our nation. And I think there's a good chance that we may have had that next president here in Oklahoma this weekend. Have you heard a common theme from the, the, the folks who have spoken so far in terms of potential candidates? any one overriding theme that's come through in every one of their talks? Well, I think the overriding theme I've heard from the candidates that have been here is that we have to change things in America, that people are concerned about our safety and our security, especially with all the threats that we have across the world with ISIS and, and terrorism. They're very concerned about how do we continue to be the superpower of the world to show peace, to have peace in, in our world, but do it through strength of our nation right. so that people know that we mean what we mean in our nation. And so that's been a big theme, certainly the economy, jobs, helping American families and the, and the next generation do better than what the last generation did, being more uh, hopeful, more aspirational. I, I hear a lot about hope and aspiration. So there's a lot of people in our nation that are worried about where our country is going and, and what road we're heading down. Well, the focus of the conference, one of the focus is, is energy, energizing America. Uh, do you think that the, the men and, and women who are here this weekend get it, get what we're talking about when we say how important energy is here in Oklahoma and around the country? We've had a lot of great discussion about a North American energy independence and why it's important not only for our national security, and absolutely important for our national security, but also why it's important for our economic security. And there's no better example than the state of Oklahoma. If you look at the energy sector and the number of jobs it's created, one out of every seven jobs in Oklahoma is related to the energy sector, right. either directly or indirectly. You look at the amount of revenue that is generated. You look at the trickle-down effect of not only the direct jobs that you have in energy-related industries, but the indirect jobs that you have, whether it's the restaurants, the hotels, the housing industry, certainly retail shopping, commercial real estate. You look at the boom going on in real estate throughout the state. And I think people understand that the energy sector is important. And I think one of the things you'll hear and you have heard at this conference is that we as a party support an all the above energy strategy, right. whether it's oil, whether it's gas, which we're very fortunate to have an abundance of in Oklahoma sure. and many other states, but also wind energy. And we're also open to all other forms of energy, as long as it helps our nation be energy independent, right. especially in a time that's, that's a challenging time in our world. Well, this has been going on as the legislature has been winding up the last few days. Hectic time at the Capitol. Give me your, uh, your overview of how the, session, uh, how the session went. Were you pleased, displeased? in general with how things went this Well, this, this is one of those very busy weeks. I mean, hosting a national conference that will have a straw poll for right. the Republican primary election for the President of the United States is certainly a busy time during the last week of session, and hopefully the legislature will be able to wrap up by the end of today. I was just talking to the Capitol a few moments ago. Things are moving along very well. It looks like we have a budget proposal that is on my desk, hopefully. It's uh, passed out of the Senate today, passed out of the House yesterday. We've got a lot of other pieces of legislation that have passed through the last couple of days that will be landing on my desk, so we'll be reviewing those. But, you know, when I started out in February with my State of the State speech, one of the things I told the people of Oklahoma is, you know, we've got a very low unemployment rate, 3.9 percent. We have the lowest unemployment rate in the nation of a major metropolitan city here in Oklahoma City at 3.3 percent. And, of course, we've had a nice savings account. The energy sector has taken a little bit of a downturn, which we've been through before. We know how to go through these things. We will get through it, but it has affected our budget. But once again, we've had to make some, some tough decisions at the Capitol to get our budget finished, get it balanced. So one of the things I talked about was the need to look at how we structurally do our state budget in the state of Oklahoma. Right. We have made some improvements this legislative session that I asked for. One was that we would have what's called performance informed budgeting, that we would set goals, that we would measure those things, we'd hold people accountable in state agencies and make sure we're delivering the results that we want to have. 
And we also passed other legislation that said that we would look at our tax incentives and our tax credits every four years. In other words, we review and see if they're doing what we want them to do, which is creating jobs and investment. The other three things that I said were things that we needed to focus on this leg legislative session were things that hold us back as a state. We may have strong jobs and, and a good economy and, and have things going well on that front, but there are things that hold us back. Educational attainment is one of the top priorities, our incarceration rate in our state, and then the health of our state. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud of this legislative session that the legislature heeded those words, did some great work this session. I gotta compliment them on what they've done on education. Even with a big budget deficit because of the energy prices, we were able to hold education flat. Right. They're not gonna get a spending cut, which is great on common education. We also passed some legislation dealing with school choice and charter schools, and also addressed uh, reinforcing the Reading Sufficiency Act, making sure our children can read by the <coughs> third grade. Mm -hmm. On the incarceration front, we addressed some major legislation dealing with mandatory uh, sentencing reform legislation which will help us right. especially with our over incarceration rate um, in our state a lot of incarceration i should say and on the health front we made huge strides passing a prescription monitoring bill for people who abuse uh, painkillers in our state and doctor shop uh, secondly texting while driving right. something that's been a top goal we're able to get that accomplished I'm dealing with eliminating smoking 24 7 in our school systems mm -hmm. pass that legislation and, and then the other one was helping children that have seizures that are a life threat to them by being able to pass a, a new medical study with a CBD oil. Right. Well, Governor Fallon, thank you for your time. It's always good to see you. Good to see you too.